Hello, my name is Patrick Webb, and we're starting to wrap up our series on the chemistry of plaster and heritage building with a discussion of mixing all the binders we previously discussed. Which ones are compatible with which, uh, which ones are beneficial, have some practical use when they're mixed together. Uh, a lot of people don't realize it, how, uh, how much, many more options you can have. How many more specifications can be filled if you have a good understanding of how these binders can sometimes work together. Um, I picked up this neat little diagram in France where they have this large tradition of working with all of these uh, binders that I previously mentioned. So what they do is they draw these two opposing triangles like so. And then um, at the top of the triangle, they uh, put a binder that works pretty much works good with everybody. And that's clay. Bottom, they have another friendly one. Line. So you know clay is going to be able to work with uh, this side of the triangle or that side. And then same with line. So um, on the right side, we could put the. NHLs, and for that matter, the uh, natural cement. They have a very similar uh, chemistry, so they can kind of be lumped together as those hydraulic line products. And then on the left side, we could put um, gypsum. All right, so there covers our five uh, heritage binders. So we find that um, this combination, lime with clay, perfectly fine. Lime with gypsum also works. Gypsum and clay, okay. In fact, all three together, just fine. We have the same uh, phenomenon happening on this side. Yes, clay, lime, natural hydraulic limes, natural cements. Uh, chemically, they're all, they're all compatible with one another. Of course, you're going to get different results depending on what percentage you mix with, with what, but um, yeah, fundamentally, there's, there's no chemical issue. There's not going to be an adverse reaction. Um, interestingly enough, um, we, have, we do have an issue sometimes with gypsum and the natural hydraulic lime and natural cements. So, when does that occur? Well, um, you can apply gypsum over natural hydraulic lime or natural cement after um, 28 days approximately. Um, what happens is while the calcium uh, uh, dicalcium silicate is still active, um, it can have an adverse reaction with the sulfur in the gypsum, even a, a fully uh, cured gypsum so that you precipitate um, certain types of salts. They're expanding uh, sulfate salts, what we call fluorescent sometimes. We'll definitely call it sulfate attack. Thomocytes, uh, etrangites are, are a couple of those. So, um, but so long as that uh, natural cement is cured, it's not a problem. But it's one direction only. Um, if you have gypsum as a, uh, as a plaster or as a mortar, um, you wouldn't want to use the uh, natural cement because the, the active silicates in there would uh, want to react with that sulfur and it could create some adverse, um, adverse issues with delamination, with efflorescence, and so on. Well, it's a nice diagram to have. I can start perhaps talking about some uh, classic combinations. Um, and we'll start with our first binder. What, which of the other binders can be added to it and, and what are some of the some of the good benefits of that. Uh, a lot of times clay is used um, in natural building, uh, things like adobes, rammed earth. Um, you have a history of using actually uh, clay line mortars in uh, brickwork. And um, the addition of um, lime, natural hydraulic lime, uh, natural cement in, in these type of coatings or earthen plasters and, and adobe uh, mixes. The, it can act as a stabilizer. So, for example, the um, aggregate portion of uh, 
many times that these earthen renders have, like the gravel or large sands, can be stabilized, and particularly with a cement portion that's available in natural cement. Whereas um, lime um, is a good stabilizer for the, the clay. It works directly with the clay. So uh, a lot of times you find that NHL or NHL natural cement blend mixed with clay will provide the, um, the highest degree of stabilization of earthen renders and mortars. In gypsum, uh, classic one is in, uh, in France. They have a stupier and uh, the lime is added to the gypsum in this case and that improves um, some of the workability uh, to make a beautiful nice smooth mortar that may get cut or polished in some way afterwards. Lime, um, it's very common uh, now to do the reverse, add a small portion of uh, gypsum to the lime for like lime engaged plastering or when you're running uh, lime moldings you may add some gypsum uh, as a way to be able to, to run it faster, uh, increase the set time, so really as an accelerator for the lime. Also to give it some early hardness. And then for um, the natural hydraulic limes, uh, it's very common to also add lime to the natural hydraulic limes when you um, are looking for more flexural strength. Compressive strength is not quite as important, so particularly in a lot of heritage work. Uh, perhaps the compressive strength is a, a little bit too high for the existing soft masonry. It's not a problem. Mix it with lime. There's good guidelines for what that will do um, as far as uh, compressive strength and that way you can hit the number that you need to. Um, same goes uh, if you need to increase the um, compressive strength of a natural hydraulic line or get a, get a greater frost resistance, you can add some natural cement to it as well. So with a little bit of uh, knowledge, a little bit of technical um, support from uh, responsible manufacturers, you can, um, you can work with all these materials together as was classically done in the past for, for hundreds of years.